Hello, good morning and welcome to church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get onto our feet and get our service started. Thank you for coming to church. Welcome to our online church. This is House of Revival Church and we are gathered this morning to honor and worship our God. And so we'll start our service. Mighty Father, we come before you this morning. We come before you in honor and reverence of your name and of who you are to us. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come into your presence. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you, O Lord. Receive our praise, receive our worship, receive our honor, but Father, because you are worthy of it, Lord. We come as vessels, Lord, not worthy to stand before your holy throne, but because of your mercy that you have extended unto all. Thank you, Lord, for receiving us as we are. And Lord, we honor you with our lives, we honor you with our worship, we honor you with everything that we are, King of glory. Lord, we know we are not worthy, but we come before you and ask for your grace. Receive us this morning. And even as your children come into church, Lord, we commit everything that's going to happen today. We commit our service, uh, our preacher, we commit our worship team. We commit all those who are serving you, O Lord, this morning. Lord, Lord, may you be honored in all that we do. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Hello. Praise the Lord. May you be blessed as we worship this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
does the impossibles. Lord, we worship you today. We want to lift our sweet voices unto you. May you receive them as sweet incense, oh God. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. 
teach me how to talk like you do.
joy. There is peace. There is love. There is wealth. Whatever you need, it is in his presence. You just need to call upon the Lord in your time of need. His presence will come down. In this worship, you just need to call upon his presence. And it will come down. Lord, I call upon your Holy Spirit to come down. Lord, I call upon your Spirit to come down. Lord, I call upon your Spirit. I call upon your Spirit. Lord, your Spirit. Lord, your Spirit. Cause your rain to fall down. Cause your rain to fall down. Cause your presence to come down. Lord, I call upon your presence in our midst. I call upon your power. Fresh fire in the name of Jesus. You are God who answers my fire. Lord, may you come and cause your rain. Lord, come.
Father, Lord God, we thank you for today. And we pray, Lord God, that you will be with us. And we pray, Lord God, that you will speak to us. And we pray that you give us understanding and insight and wisdom and knowledge. And I pray that you teach us humility, Lord. That we will humble ourselves before your mighty hand. That in due time we shall be lifted up. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You're most, most welcome. Give a mighty hand clap to the worship team. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. For making the time. Especially in the first service. I know that people who wake up early are serious. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You all are looking elegant. You're looking smart. Smile to somebody. You're feeling comfortable. The smell of danger has surely passed. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, you're welcome today. Uh, we appreciate you as a church, and we believe that you choosing us uh, is a sign of honoring us as a church, and we believe that uh, we will add something to you. If you're visiting for the first time, we welcome you. Uh, thank you for coming. And we know that uh, if you don't have a church, this is the right church for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. We are still dealing with the topic of redigging the wells as, as a theme for the year. Amen. We are redigging the wells. And uh, that comes from Genesis 26. And as we said, we go back and some of the things that we highlighted that we need to redig was uh, the time with the time you spend with God, okay, prayer, okay, and fellowshipping with others or building relationships. Those three are key, and they have uh, been given to us. Hallelujah. Yes. So. Uh, those are some of the instructions that we had. Uh, we, of course, also had prophecies or promises. Okay. And so we are supposed to also redig those ones. Uh, I want today to concentrate uh, a bit more on the prayer side. Hallelujah. I want to concentrate on the prayer side uh, because... Uh, I think that it is uh, it is uh, a great tool. I think that God also reminded us uh, that we ought to always pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Men ought to always pray without fainting. Uh, another part, it says that you should always pray at all times. In Ephesians, Talking about uh, uh, the, the armor of God, he says, and after doing this, pray with all kinds of prayers. Hallelujah. And we rem uh, one of the things which highlighted among the, 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 the instructions was that a long way before daybreak, Jesus got up to do what? To pray. Mark 1.35. A long way before daybreak, Jesus got up to pray. Hallelujah. So we talked about the quality of the prayer, if you remember correctly, the way you pray, but the quality of prayer. Uh, and I know that we pray differently, but there are some fundamentals. Uh, I think for me, if I want to pray 
really, really quality prayer. I pray as I read the word. That's, that's how I pray. I can pray, of course I pray, uh, but when I'm reading the word, I am more effective praying. And I probably will not read constantly. I will probably read a chapter and pray. Then I read a verse and I pray. Then I can go on and on because I find it's enriching. That's me. You don't have to copy that. But I find that the word starts to speak to you. There are others who will sit and they like a quiet time. And they can pray without dozing. Hallelujah. I take COVID came, but now COVID can make one sleep. <laughs> this Omicron, just find you dozing. You wake up in the morning and you still want to sleep. Ogamba can't take me the cheek at you look at your clock and it's eight. <laughs> anyway, it should not be like that. Hallelujah. And I think that uh, it is something that we need to tell ourselves, okay? It is something that we need to teach ourselves. Now, for you to pray effectively, the Bible says you pray in the spirit, but you also pray with understanding, okay? You pray with understanding. So my job here is to give you a certain perspective of, of, of how the spiritual world works, and how that affects the quality of your prayer. So uh, I've said understanding the spiritual world for effective prayer. Okay, That is the title of our message. Understanding the spiritual world for effective praying. Amen. It is to give you a certain perspective so that you can be able to pray effectively. So pull out your notebook. And your pen, hallelujah, and write down your expectations. Write down your expectations. It is a good thing to have expectations when you come to the house of God. It is a good thing to come with a pen and a paper. If you don't have, you can use your phone, put it in aeroplane mode, and then you can start recording. But a pen and a paper, better still, a book is what you need. So understanding the spiritual world for effective praying. Hallelujah. And how many of us know that the spiritual is more real than the physical? Because the physical is going to pass away, but the spiritual endures. It was here before us, actually. Hallelujah. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in truth and spirit. So God is a spirit being. And God created different spirits. Hallelujah. So he's called the father of all spirits. Hallelujah. Including you, you're a spiritual being in a physical body. One thing about spirits is that they don't die. They are eternal. Just depends on where you choose to spend your eternity. That is a choice, but spirits are eternal. So it is important that we understand that, that side. So we are going to be looking at things like our creator. Okay, We are going to look at angels. Under angels, we'll look at the, the good angels or heavenly angels and the fallen angels. We're going to be looking at demons. And they are not the same as angels or fallen angels. And how these interact with God's purposes on earth. Hallelujah. And how you interact with that. Amen. And how you interact with that, especially in fulfilling your God-given mandate. What is the mandate God gave us? To be fruitful, to multiply, to fill the earth, to subdue it, and have dominion. Genesis 1.28. Hallelujah. So your dominion mandate is affected a lot by the spiritual realm. But also by how you respond or act. 
with uh, with that knowledge or with with regard to how the spiritual world functions so you need to know it is not something that should be abstract it's a bit of meat but you need to know why is it that sometimes you pray long and nothing comes through why is it that sometimes you pray and things come quickly why is it that when you're praying for a simple thing, it is easy. When you're praying for a family redemption, it takes more time. When you're praying for a nation, you just need to wait, probably just to engage as a church. Why is that so? Those are some of the things we want to understand. Hallelujah. And so today I'm just going to give an introduction, whet your appetite, stimulate your, your mind, and then we shall delve in. So we are going to learn about those entities, okay? We won't go so much into the study of God because it's also long and we know the attributes uh, of, of God, uh, but we'll deal a little bit with that uh, spiritual law, okay? And then we will talk about, as I told you, the heavenly angels and then the fallen angels, okay? And then demons and then us as kings, okay? And then we should be able to understand how to effectively pray things through and and how do demons affect your prayer life or your thinking how about the fallen angels the, you, i think you've heard of principalities you've heard of powers you've heard of rulers okay dominions how do those interact with your prayer life hallelujah are you excited are you scared? <laughs> Hallelujah. So just as a preamble before we start the details, I would like to just take you to a passage in Daniel just to give you uh, a little bit of insight into the practicability of what we are going to talk about and, and why that is important. So go with me to Daniel 10. Hallelujah. Now, in Daniel 9, Daniel had been praying. Daniel was a prayerful person, and Daniel had been praying uh, for his people with understanding because he had read scriptures, and he says, actually, we can just go there a bit. Uh, he says that in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, the version say, attack success. And others just say, Zaxes, <laughs> hallelujah, of the lineage of the Meds, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. That's Babylon, okay? And we have been explained to that Chaldean simply mean, me, means witch doctors, the land of the witch doctors, or the land of idolatry, or Babylon. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make request by prayer, supplication, with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And then you read his prayer. Okay? And you go on and on, and then you find that uh, an answer is given through Gabriel. The angel Gabriel is sent and he comes to explain to him certain things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, so that, that tells you how prayer was affecting a response and how that response was being brought about. In this particular case, Daniel was given insight, but also he was praying because the Jews had been in captivity and 70 years had first approached. Okay? So their time was ending and he had understood. So he knew that even if the time ends, you don't just wish it. There has to be prayer going on. And because he's praying, you will realize that a message was dispatched. But later on in chapter 11, you realize that actually they had to strengthen Darius to start effecting that order. 
And who strengthened him? It was an angel. Okay? So angels interact with the earthly realm, with kings, with rulers, with governors. Hallelujah. Yes. So he says, in the third year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. And he understood the message and had understanding of the visions. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three weeks full. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now, on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was guarded with gold of Ufas. His body was like burial, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. Can you imagine such a sight? Even the great Daniel just collapsed. <laughs> he said, man. And he saw the vision, but the other people, of course, didn't. And he says, I, Daniel, I also saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision. But a great terror fell upon them. They fled to hide themselves. <laughs> Therefore, I was left alone when I saw this great vision. And no strength remained in me. For my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words, and while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face with my face on the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. So he was kneeling with his arms down. He had already fallen. And he said to me, Oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand, to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come. Why? Because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Now, just imagine this guy who made Daniel tremble, shake. You know, in science, we have the fear of light response. Certainly, this was fear. And that's adrenaline. Daniel had an adrenaline surge. And when the thing comes, you start to shake. Either you run, you read, or you fight. Okay? Or you just fear and fail. Now, once you fear, all your valves just give way. You start to sweat. Things start to come out from all directions. <laughs> this being, the Bible says, had been resisted by the king of Persia, the prince of Persia. Just think about that. So now, what caliber was that prince? Use your mind. Eh? Imagine with me. This being whose face was like lightning. He, had, he looked like bronze. The feet, it was just a terrifying sight. The prince of Persia had resisted him. Not one day, not two, but three weeks. Hallelujah. And he says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, meaning there are many chief princes, okay? But he's one of them. One of the chief princes came to help me for I had been left alone there with now the kings of Persia. Okay? We'll be do dealing with that structure. But the prince was above the kings. Okay? Hallelujah. Now you need to understand that word prince means ark or fast. 
That's why we have the archangel, archbishop, the ruler of the other bishops. Okay? So this prince is the ruler of the other princes. Okay? So this paints for us, and it took another prince. Now you're familiar with Michael. He's among the few. I think there are only four angels that are named by name in the Bible. Four. You know them? Michael, Gabriel, they took them out. <laughs> Lucifer, hallelujah. Pardon? Yes, but he's still an, 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 an angel. Hall, hallelujah. You know the fourth one in Revelation, a bad one? They release him. Who knows? Ah, como gena kasoma. He has a different name in Greek and in Hebrew. Abaddon. And the other name is Apollyon. Those are the four named angels by name in the Bible. But there are many, many, many numerous angels and they have names. Hallelujah. So Michael is called the archangel. And he's the warring angel. And he's the one who came to fight so that this guy would go through to come and deliver a very important message that had to do with destiny for our people, but not just for our people, actually for us all. Do you understand that that message was affecting you? Hallelujah. You will say how. He was talking about the coming kingdoms and how the Messiah comes. Amen. Because of the importance of the message, he needed high-level resistance. It is like when they are bundling a common thief. One or two, two policemen are enough. Isn't it? But when they are getting a, who is that? Jamil Mukuru. It has to be a battalion to guard the guy. They have to grab him. They have to send. Now when it is ADF, they send an entire division. Hallelujah. Because there was the prince and also the kings. Now you realize that they were affecting the rulership down. There are other verses. We'll talk about that in the subsequent teachings. But if you read Ezekiel 28, you'll also find the king of Tyre, the prince of Tyre. Clearly, the, the spiritual world was affecting what happens here, but also the purposes of God. That is my point why I'm reading for you this text uh, beforehand. And he says, when he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face. Uh, he said, now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in later days. For the vision refers to many days yet to come. When he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly, one having the likeness of the Son of Man touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. I think he was like, Man, why did I even pray? <laughs> for how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? For as for me, no strength remained in me now. Now, nor is there any breath left in me. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me and said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be with you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak for you have strengthened me. Then he said, do you know what, why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. He had to go back and he would still fight. And when I have gone forth, indeed the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. Okay, so now these things had not yet been written. This is what we call scripture. But he's telling him, now I'm going to tell you what is written, which is what he wrote here. So there is scripture in heaven. 
Okay? There are books in heaven, books of truth. And we just glimpse some which was decoded. Hallelujah. If you read in Revelation, you will realize that John heard what the seven thunders spoke. He was about to write and he said, ah, 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 don't write that one. So John died with the thing. I wonder what they said. Some speculate that it must have been what the psalmist writes about the Lord thunders. But there is scripture of truth in heaven. And when God reveals to us, Moses says that the revealed things belong to us and our children. Okay? So, this angel says, I'm going to reveal to you what is written. So, that's why it is important even in your prayer to discern what is written. Okay? You need to discern what is written about you. Because there is what is written about you, isn't it? The Bible says all your days were written in his book before any of them came to pass. Doesn't it say so? Psalms 139 verse 16. So that is truth written about you. But you may not find it here in the scripture for sure. You'll have the general picture, the general information. Now you need to discern. Some of it that has been captured will be here. You remember the story uh, of Ahab and how he died? Yes. There was a meeting in heaven. And God called the host and they were discussing about this man and his fate. But he had no clue that a discussion was taking place about him. Even you, you are discussed. Especially if you are of importance. Hallelujah. So you better position yourself. You are discussed. Are you now getting it? So, so it's not as scary, is it? No, yeah. So, because of that, you need to know that the way you pray, how you pray, and how you live affects the manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth. Affects the fulfillment of his purposes. Affects the fulfillment of your destiny. You, the way you live, the way you pray. Amen. And that there are certain spiritual forces that act. It's not that things just keep happening alone. You have a part to play and you can affect the course of life, the course of a community. Hallelujah. And sometimes the fight can be intense and you may need strengthening. Listen to this. But I'll tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one upholds me against this except Michael. Then he says, also, you know, that is now next chapter. You know that these chapters are just put for you to follow, but it is, was one scroll. Eh? So it is not like now chapter this. It's a continuation. Okay. So now open the scroll longer and let's read further. He says, also in the first year of Darius the Med. Are you familiar with Darius? He was a king of, the, of Persia. You remember when the guys conspired to throw Daniel in the den? This was the king. Okay? I, even I, stood up to confirm and strengthen him. And now I tell you the truth. Behold, three more kings will arise in Persia. Now this is written in the scripture is, which is telling him, I'm going to tell you three more kings and the fourth shall be far richer than them all. By his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Greece and blah, 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 blah. Hallelujah. You go back and read. It's good to read from like chapter 9, chapter 7 actually. Very interesting reading. We can't go through all of it. But he's saying that I will tell you that I stood to strengthen Darius. That being, that angel is saying I had to strengthen Darius. Why? Darius was a king actually who understood number one that Daniel was faithful and was a man of God. I think you can read about that. But two, he, he was the one reigning when that period came to release the Jews. You know, there were four batches of Jews who went back. Forget when later on, when Nehemiah went. There had been other releases, okay? And he needed strengthening to make such a decision. So earthly kings, that's why he say, 
Pray for what? For your leaders that what? There may be peace. You see war? Do you know war is a spirit? Mm -hmm. Do you know that death is a spirit? Do you know that hell or Hades is a spirit? Yes. Do you remember the rider of the pale horse? There are four horses in Revelation. Again, we are just, today is just for appetizing us, introducing, before we go into now the details of a systematic study. One of the, the riders of, of, of the pale horse was death. And the Hades or hell was following right behind him. That's why the Bible tells us that at the end, death will be thrown into the lake of fire. Hell will also be thrown into the lake of fire. So hell is a place, yes, but hell is a spirit. Death is also a spirit. Okay? Do you know that in, in hospitals, if somebody loses the will to live, death just comes. That's my personal observation. People who usually just give up with the will to fight, one or two days you are confirming death. They've just given up the will to fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these are spiritual entities. So rulers are affected by spiritual entities, both the good ones and the bad ones. So that's why something can stir up a war from nowhere. You guys are having peace. We are talking about now Corona. Guy na leta tanka na gamba ngenda kulumba from the north, from the south, from this way. And war just breaks out. Amen? So the Bible says you pray for your leaders. Now, the spiritual realm is governed by laws. So it is not wishful thinking. They actually go and present cases. Now, remember that God is the judge of all flesh. Okay? He's the chief judge. He's also called the judge of righteousness. That doesn't, that means that he he's shows no partiality, no favoritism. So spirit beings operate under spiritual laws. Hallelujah. And so they can have jurisdiction. We are going to see that when the angels fell, okay, they their system of organization stayed and they have jurisdictions. That's why you'll find a prince with kings, with sub-rulers, with sub-rulers until there is a strong man over Kisasi who is just holding people strongly. And under them they have demons. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see our time is fast spent. So, Yes, it is introduction. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, when God created the earth or the world, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, we can read there, that in the beginning, God created the heavens, plural, and the earth. I know some versions put the heaven, but that word is a plural word. Heavens are many, not one. Okay? And the earth. So that's why Paul says, I know a man who was called in the third heaven. Certainly, if there is a third heaven, that should be a first one and a second one. Hallelujah. Yes. So the Bible says in Psalms 19, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. The firmament show what? His handiwork. Okay. So when God created the earth, he created it complete, whole. That includes the angels. That includes uh, everything. Now, all of a sudden, we see that now the earth was formless and void. And darkness was over the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the waters. And then God said, let there be light and as light. And God saw the light that it was good. Hallelujah. Yes. And then he called the light day 
and he separated the light from the day, and he called the light day, and the darkness night, and there was evening, and there was morning. That is the first day. Question, when did he create the water? Because we never have a mention of it. Hallelujah. Ah. So, you see that when they start to tell you the earth, okay, the day one, there are things that are already there, but these are created. Question, when did he create the angels? Hallelujah. Question, when did he create the earth? Hallelujah. Just to get you thinking. Okay? Now, the word used there, the earth was formless and void, is tohu vobohu. Formless, without form, without shape, without, the earth was now formless. But he had created it. Now, Isaiah tells us in Isaiah 45 verse 18 that when God created the earth, he did not create it tohu. So what happened for it to become tohu is what we'll be dealing with when we are now dealing with the section of angels, the fallen ones. Okay? And then we'll understand the hierarchy of those angels. Make sense? Okay? And then you'll understand when you read, for example, in Ephesians 6, and uh, when you read about your strongholds, and when you read in Colossians, when you read about principalities, what does it mean? Powers. What does it mean? Dominions. What does it mean? Okay? Rulers. And now we'll know that because of that, this then is how I should live and how I should pray. Are we together so far? Are we lost? As if, as if. Hallelujah. So, the main essence of today is for you to understand that God created everything. That's number one that we understand. Secondly, God created spirit beings, okay? Now, under those, I've told you that we do have what we call angels. And we'll have heavenly angels, those who stayed loyal, and fallen angels, okay? Those who rebelled, okay? Then we have another strange entity called demons, and they are not the same like fallen angels. You can we'll look at characteristics of demons. You'll see that they behave differently from these other fallen angels they are talking about. They behave classically differently. And they also have a motive. Okay? And how they act. That far we understand. Then we have man who is a spirit being also. But now he has a body, and your body is so important. Because now you have the legal right here on earth. That's why demons want to be in a body. And there are many examples. Remember the guy who had the legion of demons in him? And then when they cast them out, they were begging to be sent at least in the pigs. They, they crave to have a body. So there is that entity called demons. They are called unclean spirits. Some versions translate it as devils, but that word is not devils. In Greek, it's a different, it is demonia or daimon, muluganda, daimon. Vam, daimon. It is that word. The, one, the word devil is diabolos. They are different, okay? The reason the King James translated it devils is because what perspective in Greek they had good demons and bad demons? Now we know there's no good demon because they used to worship devils and demons. Okay, so to be distinct, they translated that word as devils. Okay, just to be distinct, but the actual correct translation is demon. Okay, and then we have the devil, so we have those entities that we are going to learn about God heavenly angels, fallen angels, and demons, and man's interaction with them. 
Hallelujah. Basically, that's, in, that's the gist of this study series. Now, we have said that your praying, therefore, is important, and praying with knowledge is even more important because then you know that this is how I engage. If I'm praying for an individual, okay, I need to pray this way. If I'm praying for a nation, I need to pray this way, okay? If I'm praying for a community, I need to pray this way. Hallelujah. If I'm praying for an unbeliever, I probably need to discern. That's why the Bible says you need to discern that spirit because there are different spirits behind the operations of people, of men. Hallelujah. And it is already coming to ten. Hallelujah. 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 So, hey, but I think I have more time. Hey, I do. Oh, good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we clear so far with that? So let us talk a bit about angels. Okay. Now, when God created angels, he created them and they have different responsibilities and different ranks. Okay? Others put them in, in, in levels, but they are just basically different types. And Paul actually writes about them. You will, uh, and, and of course, we see them also in the Old Testament. For example, you will hear a word like seraphim. Okay? The burning ones. That one you find it in Isaiah chapter 6. Okay? Then you will hear about cherubim. That's plural. plural. Or oh, cherub. These are four faced creatures. Hallelujah. And, uh, and, okay, let's just talk about the seraphim and the cherubim. Maybe we'll talk just about those two and we end there. So, in, in Isaiah uh, chapter 6, Isaiah has a vision of God's throne. Okay? And he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I did what? I saw the Lord. What was he doing? He was sitting on his throne, meaning he was king, even though the earthly king was dead. And that throne was high and exalted. And above it stood what? Seraphim. Hello? Seraphim, the burning ones. They are like fire. And these ones had six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet, and with two, they did fly. And one called unto the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. And the whole earth is full of what? His glory. So these are seraphim. Seraphim are, are associated with the glory of God. They are the, the, the ones that are around the glory of God, they are the ones John also talks about in Revelation. He calls them the creatures that keep crying day and night. And they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. So these ones here worship and they seem to be associated with the glory of the Lord. Amen? So, they don't look like how you, you know, the pictures of angels with the, eh? yes, and the kababi face, these are terrifying creatures. <laughs> these are terrifying creatures. And they can, they can pick calls from the altar which are your prayers, by the way. Your prayers are like fire. Amen? And the Bible says that the Isaiah, when he saw the Lord and these seraphs, he was aware of his ineptness because they represent God's holiness. 
Hallelujah. They represent God's holiness. Amen. So, these minister directly to God. However, because they are associated with holiness, we see that Isaiah cried out and said, I'm undone. My lips are unclean. My people are unclean. Everything he, around him he realized was unclean. So this one of them took a call and cleansed him. So he was ministered to. Hallelujah. 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 This is one example of those angelic beings. There are others that guard the presence of God. You will encounter them in Ezekiel when we start. Okay, They are called cherubim. Cherubim. One single one is a cherub. And actually they are first mentioned when man falls. Do you remember? And God puts a, banishes man from the garden and places a flaming sword and cherubim to guard the way to the tree of life. My question, you know, the, the angels are, are so powerful. Why would you need a cherub? Actually, cherubim. Because the other ones are again more terrifying. Just one, that one who came to Michael would have, I mean to Daniel, would have been sufficient. My suspicion is that maybe he was guarding it against another cherub. Mm. Because why do you need all that firepower? <laughs> Hallelujah. They asked Putin, what well, you're saying you're training, but that firepower. <laughs> anyway, God tells us that they put a cherub to guard. Now, cherubs guard jealously. Okay? The presence of God. They guard. So, on the ark, you'll see that you put actually cherubim with wings protecting the presence of God. Okay? And the ark was a picture of what is actually in heaven. What Moses did, the tabernacle, the ark, he saw according to the pattern of what is in heaven. So this is how cherubim are. And if you remember, maybe we can, we can read there, uh, if time permits. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 1, we are on the second level, just explaining. So I told you that to be a little bit of meat, so that we create a basis, and then we can engage at the level where we feel application. Because giving you just the application without the background may not be uh, as sufficient. Now, it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Keba, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of who? God. On the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river Keba, and the hand of the Lord was upon him. Then I looked, and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north. Now, the throne of God, usually when they talk about directions, seems to be implied to be in the northern direction. Usually say out of the north. Okay? A great cloud with raging fire engulfed itself. And brightness was all around it and radiating out of the midst like the color of amber out of the midst of fire. Also from within it came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Each one had four faces. And each one had four wings. Their legs were straight and their soles of their feet were like the soles of calves' feet. 
they sparkled like <laughs> the color of bronze. And the hands of a man were under their wings on their four sides. And each of the four had faces and wings. Their wings touched one another. The creatures did not turn, which, which implies God turneth not. Okay? They don't turn when they went, but each one went straight forward. For the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side. Each, had the face, each of the four had the face of an ox. And each of the four had the face of an eagle. That's where their faces, their wings stretched upward. Two wings of each one touched one another and two covered their bodies. And each one went straight forward. They went wherever the spirit wanted to go. And they did not turn where they went. Their appearance was like burning coals of fire. Like the appearance of torches going back and forth among the living creatures. The fire was bright and out of the fire went lightning. Man, I would rather see the vision of Daniel. Because this one here was at another level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you will go on there and then you will find that there were wheels. We will probably have a pictorial next time to give you a picture. Okay. These ones here are terrifying creatures, but they are also angels, okay? They are angelic beings, but they have four faces. They don't sound, you know, you've seen the picture of cherubs, a small baby with something like that. Forget that Hollywood stuff. These have feet of calves, animals. Those are things we usually say, what are they? Bumenke. <laughs> These are straight out of the fiction book. But they got the presence of God. And you'll see them over and over. They actually appear severally. And they got, they jealously got the presence of God. They also got the mercy seat. The mercy seat is where God sits in judgment but with mercy. To show mercy. Remember the meaning of the name of the Lord. Merciful compassionate, gracious. Okay? So these guard the mercy seat. They guard the way to the tree of life so that man won't just go and eat and eternally live in sin. Okay? So they guard that way. Hallelujah. I said they have four faces. Isn't it? Yes. The face of a man the face of a lion, the face of an ox, and the face of an eagle. These are their four faces. These also we see in Revelation. And John sees them, but he will see one. I think he was seeing one. They say one had the face of a man, or the other had the face of a lion. So I think he was seeing from a different perspective. But this God, the throne of God. Okay, we have seven more under that, but that will be too much information for that day. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So, we will see the we will complete the angel, angelic hierarchy, okay, and then we'll talk about the rebellion. Now, Satan rebels, okay, and when he rebels, because he was also called a guardian cherub that covered it. He was the chief cherub. Hallelujah. He was the chief of those things, the four. That's why we've touched them. And he moved to and fro among the fiery stones, the Bible tells us. Hallelujah. However, when he rebelled, he had to be kicked out. And the Bible tells us that Michael and his angels fought because Michael is the warring angel. He's the chief warrior, okay? He's the one who sounds and we rise up from the dead. You know that? For the Lord will descend with what? With a shout, with a trumpet call, and the voice of the archangel will sound and the dead in Christ will rise. So should he sound 
up we go. So that guy is the one who throws Lucifer, another cherub, one of these. Okay? So Lucifer is multifaced. Okay? Do you get the point? He's multifaced. That's why the Bible tells us that your enemy, the devil, prowls around like what? Like a lion looking for whom he to devour, but you resist him. Lucifer also comes and he inhabits men and influences men, especially the final one who is called the son of perdition or the anti-Christ. Okay? Hallelujah. Yes, Lucifer raises a storm like an eagle, but we go higher. By doing what? Waiting on the Lord, Isaiah 40. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like what? Eagles. Eh. Hallelujah. So he's Mount Hyphest, and he was a cherub. Actually, he was the guardian cherub. So he falls with one third of the angels. And those angels, because of the hierarchy God had set, they just move with the same hierarchy. So that's why you'll start to find them ruling over areas, principalities, or municipalities. So that's why you see the prince of Persia. That's a ruling fallen angel. A, 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 for lack of a better word, a demonic entity or an evil angel ruling that area. Kisasi definitely should have one. The name Kisasi comes from Nsasi. Kusamira. How do we change names of places? Because they changed the Kulambiro. Kulambiro is a fairly new name. You know that? It wasn't always called Kulambiro. But the place was growing so fast. Say, hey, Kulambiro. The place that grows fast. Then they gave it. Names reflect places. Gayaza. To delay. So when you go there, things are just slow. You don't know why. You want to sell a property? It is slow. You call people there? It is slow. Kugayaza. To delay. There's just a spirit of delay. That's how they name it. Chisasi. Awariensasi. Chisota. Too many snakes. Do you, get the mean? Do you get the point? So certainly there is an influence on Chisasi, which we must break and resist and overthrow. Hallelujah. So that the name changes. Chimbeja. Hallelujah. Tinder to bridge. Names are given by observation. You look in the Bible, you will see. They, they would observe a certain thing and then give their name. Now even you know that choosing a place where to stay. You always late. <laughs> Don't run away from Gayaza, <laughs> but me, I'm just saying the facts. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is first spent. So now next week will be in serious business. At least I have stimulated you. That was my aim. I have created a, uh, an expectation. And I have painted a picture. I, I have actually struggled on how to compress the message I was telling my wife yesterday. I'm like, there's just too much to talk about in such a short time. And how do I approach it so that people will understand? So I think having an introduction and a why, why we are studying this, I think is important. And then next time, we will now go into the actual details, probably give some uh, figures, okay, and a PPT to back that up so that in case you haven't understood, you go back and you revise. However, during the week, just you know, because the information you have got is sufficient for you to start. Read the book of Daniel, particularly start from chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 11, chapter 12. Okay, those four chapters. You can read them in one hour and you will be done. 
So maybe you should read it like twice before next week. Hallelujah. Maybe read it today because I know when the week starts, you won't have time. Hallelujah. Understand, therefore, that when you pray, you are starting to engage the spiritual realm. Prayer is a spiritual activity. Okay? Now, when you're not praying for, when you're praying for things like food, like shelter, you're versing demons. That's earthly warfare on earth. The demons inhabit earth. But when you go now to praying for others, intercession, praying for places, praying for families, you're now dealing with the powers of the air, the heavenlies. Okay? So, you can't just engage in a lazy way. I'm praying for my family. You know, polygamy, tuta, obwenzi, bututa. You just, mkama yamba, mganda wangoyo, avemo obwenzi, finished. Hey, guy, you just see he's marrying another one. So, you must engage at that level. So, I pray that as we go back, already we start to be stirred up. We start to, to learn to be diligent. One of the things, I'm getting ahead of myself, but one of the things Daniel did is he searched out for understanding. So God would see the state of his heart that he wanted to understand. And God gives to the one who seeks him. So he was able to reveal some information. The other thing he did is he humbled himself. Fasting is a way of humbling yourself before God. Okay, But the other way is foregoing things that are precious to you. He's saying, Lord, I have lowered myself because of you, and I believe you are exalted. So humbling yourself is a very key tool in praying, especially praying for families, praying for uh, clans, praying for cities, praying for nations. You better humble yourself. The other thing we see is dedication. This guy was at it 21 days. And the Bible says that the angel came because of his words. If you want to know what he was speaking, read Daniel chapter 9. You will hear his groaning, the state of his heart, his understanding of scripture, okay? Because he understood. So he says, one, I understood the time decreed, but then he starts to say, Lord, we have sinned. We have fallen. This is what we did as a people. And therefore, the things that were written in the law of Moses have come upon us. Because this had been written in Deuteronomy 28. When you rebel, when you do this, these things will come. So he begins to pray by that. So praying by scripture is such a powerful tool. Hallelujah. You must know how to pray. You must get some scripture that backs your situation. Hallelujah. So if you are heavy laden, you, you quote a scripture, you say, Lord, you have said, come here that are weary and heavy laden and I shall give you rest. If you have a spirit of heaviness, do you go and quote, instead of the spirit of heaviness, I'll give you a spirit of praise. Okay? So you begin to praise. The solution for a heavy heart is praising. I'll give you beauty for ashes. It is an exchange. So if you're in a state of having ashes, what you need is beauty. If somebody is mourning, what he needs is comfort, consolation. To comfort they that mourn. And to give them consolation. If you're in prison, you need unbinding. Isaiah 61 is where I'm quoting those things. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And in fact, when Jesus comes, he declares that mandate. Because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. The poor need good news. By the way, that word poor there is real poverty. It's not the one quoted for poor in spirit. This is poverty properly, properly. Poverty. You need the gospel. Why? The gospel teaches you to work. The gospel breaks the power of curse. Okay? The gospel breaks the power of poverty. Poverty is a spirit, by the way. And then it comes and affects you then you become lazy. So when he finds a lazy home, the spirit takes residence. Everything you do doesn't work. When you grow coffee, that year it will, wilt will come. When you say, I'm going to farm maize, the prices drop to 50 shillings. When for you always things are bad. Poverty has taken residence. You need the good news. 
Hallelujah. So to preach the good news to the poor, to bind up the broken hearted. Pieces are broken. You need them to be broken, brought together. For you, that's what you need. So you need to pray with scripture, with understanding. So as you go home, don't wait that Baja Kumala someone after three weeks, then we begin to pray. Uh-uh, now is the time to begin. To begin to pray with understanding. Pray with scripture. Have a scripture for you. There's a scripture for every situation. Actually, there are two at the bare minimum. Because at the testimony of two or three shall a matter be established. There are at least two for every situation at the bare minimum. So you begin to pull those out. Hallelujah. The demon of sleeping. That one. You just doze. But I let it have just been dozing. And I'm like, what is happening? So now you just have to jump out. Because me, I like reading from my bed. But I find if I read from my bed, I will doze off. Now I've begun sitting in the chair. And I said, ah, this bed thing. You jump out and say, I am going to just resist this devil. And you sit in the chair. No take away that chica. No take away sour. Hallelujah. 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 Let us be on our feet. We're going to pray bit a bit. Have you understood? So when Paul says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers in the heavenly places, against spiritual wickedness in the heaven, actually that word is in the heavenlies. That's what we are wrestling. Now wrestling, you know wrestling. I used to like wrestling. Who, used to, who has ever watched wrestling? Who used to like it? We would wait. You be see. Hey, I'm growing old. Who watched UTV wrestling on UTV? Yeah, I'm alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, wrestling is intense. Guys who hold themselves, they throw the other one up, then they throw you. So we are wrestling because boxing was also there. He says, he would have said, we, we don't box or wrestling. But he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we are wrestling against principalities. This guy had been attacking 21 days. And before that, he had been praying after understanding in chapter 9. Chapter 10, he went for 21. Even then, when the spiritual being appeared, he had no breath. Anyway, he was older and he had been fasting. Hallelujah. So I want to stir us up to go back and look at situations that are a bit unusual. In your life, you should have some. Hallelujah. And you choose at least one area where you are going to start to engage. You're going to humble yourself. You're going to read the word. You're going to get at least some two scriptures. You can use Google. Search out scripture about sickness. And you get, is anyone sick? Let him call the elders. Let them lay hands on him, anoint him with oil. Let them pray for him. And the prayer made in faith shall heal the sick man. Hallelujah. He says, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. In all ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will be health to your body and nourishment to your bones. You start to quote such scriptures. Hallelujah. And you say that I am not trusting in myself. I'm not being wise in my own eyes. What else do you want? Begin to pray for things that, that, that you know this one here. I need to deal with it. Some of you are redeemers in your families. And you are just still, maybe you just began working. Or you're still a student. You feel you can't even do anything. But you're seeing the spirit of poverty has invaded you. Hallelujah. Now is the time to pray. So raise your voices and pray for something that you feel you can engage. At least you can start with the low-hanging fruits, the small, small ones, small devils to deal with before we engage the bigger ones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it procrastination that for you there is always delay? There's procrastination, then there is delay. Hallelujah. Things that delay. Hallelujah. 
and that one usually means there is a destiny that you're fighting for. So you just have to engage. So Satan knows he can't win, but he can delay you. Like how he delayed Paul. I have realized that people where you start, you used to pray. Like me, I would pray, anything happens, anything. These days it's for wrestling. It is for real fighting. It means your fight has gone to another level. Hallelujah. So if you're experiencing delay, now is the time to begin engaging. Daniel's answer was delayed how many days? 21 days. Hallelujah. Some of the people have been for two years and there is just delay. We need to engage, including myself. Hallelujah. So raise your voices. Raise your voices and pray to God. Raise your voices and pray to God. Father, we believe that you have given us this time. We believe that we are here for such a time as this. We pray, Lord, that you give us understanding, that you give us insight, even as you gave Daniel. We pray, O oh Lord, that our hearts will be humble, that you forgive our sins, O oh Lord, for we have greatly, greatly sinned and then evil and perversion in your sight. Oh Lord, we have not been faithful the way we should. Lord, we have not paid attention to what we should. But we know, Lord, that you have given us dominion over the earth. You have given us a mandate to govern, to rule. And you have said that men ought to always with pray and without ceasing. Father, we pray that you give us the desire to seek you. That we will not start just engaging in business just out of sheer energy and will but Lord we will engage prayerfully we will not just think about redeeming our families by just a device but Lord we will attack the power behind the behavior the evil entities Lord the principalities that govern men the rulers of and, and those with, 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 who, who are wicked oh Lord the wickedness that is in high places Father we pray that we will engage in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord even for the time that we are here we thank you for everyone who has come open the eyes of our understanding. Let not, not the things be hard. Father, Lord God, give us insight because the enemy works, Lord, up behind the, the scenes, Lord. He does not want us to know that they are devils, that they are demons, that they are fallen angels, Lord, that they are evil spirits, Lord, that are always working against the will of God and the knowledge of God. But we are praying, Lord, that we will be able to discern, that we will be able to discern and to command them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 God bless. Hallelujah. Let's give God a mighty hand clap for his word. And let's also thank Dr. Tony that the Lord has used. Praise the Lord. Please take your seats for a few minutes. Uh, the expectations that you wrote at the beginning of the service, just check that any of those has been answered. Those who came in late, we started the service by saying, write your expectations. Have they been met? No? Um, welcome to church. This is House of Revival. In case you're joining us for the very first time, we want to give you a special welcome. Is there anybody that is joining us today for the first time? There isn't. Okay, welcome to church, everyone. Um, you might have come to church today with a heavy heart, with whatever it is you came with and you're saying now we are talking about angels and princes and demons what has that got to do with me but you know that's knowledge um, Hosea says my people perish for lack of knowledge and if we're going to pray effectively then we must seek knowledge and the knowledge that empowers us to seek God in a more meaningful way and perhaps we will receive responses to our prayers I'm reminded of scripture in Psalms uh, 119, 130. It says that the unfolding of your word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. Amen. So I pray that the unfolding of his word that the Lord has placed on Dr. Tony's heart we will bring light and will make scripture simple. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to church. Please wave to your neighbor. 
People are just waving, no smiles, no emotion, nothing. Ah, is it that bad? Um, we're going to get into a moment of giving. There's an envelope where you're seated. As a church, we appreciate you for your giving. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. And may he reward you in all ways and meet you at your point of need. We're going to give in our tithe, our offering, our first fruit, whatever you've brought to the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, those who are joining us online, thank you for your giving. Our giving channels that are projected on your screen. Uh, you could use our Momo Pay, our Airtel, Money Pay, or the bank account, whichever works. And you can give any time during the week. You don't have to wait for Sunday. Uh, for those of us in church and are ready to give, let's pray. Mighty Father, thank you. Thank you very much, Lord, for this opportunity to give back to you, Lord. We know that we give because you have given. And Lord, I pray that you who searches all our hearts and the hearts of men that give, Lord, that you will see the hearts of those that come to you. For you desire that we shall give willingly and with a cheerful heart. Lord, may there be joy in our giving, and that even as we give, Lord, may you meet each and every one at their point of need, Lord. And may you answer whatever need that is represented, O King of glory. May that giving be a point of contact. May that giving be a point of faith, Lord, and that you will return whatever it is that your children desire according to your word. Bless them, bless every heart, every family, every business, everyone, O Lord. And may your word come to pass that they that bring a gift, Lord, you will pour out a blessing that no man can contain. And the Lord, you will give strength to the hands that make wealth, because it is you that gives us the power to make wealth. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the opportunity to bless you with our giving. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Um, we shall give. The ushers will walk through. And as we give, I'll just share some very quick announcements. Um... As a church, we are updating our database. Um, after COVID, so many people came in, some people went out, and so the church is interested in just understanding, knowing who is part of House of Revival, so we are updating our database. Amen. Um, the ushers will hand over a form, or if they don't, there must be a form at the, at the tent. A form that looks like this. It's a very brief form, and it's just asking for a few details of yourself. Um, we'd be very glad if you could fill out that form. Your name, your email address, your phone number, your place of residence. Don't fear to say you live in Chisasi or Gayaza. It is well. We're going to deal with the principalities of the places we stay in. Amen. But your place of residence, we want to know that. Um, your status, are you married, are you single, are you others, please specify. Your occupation, are you employed, self-employed, student, other, please specify. Amen. Please, please, please take a minute to fill in this form. They are being handed over. I will, I will just delay a little so that we can all receive the forms. And uh, once you have filled in the form, don't go with them. Drop it in the baskets so that we can then use that information. For those who prefer the online option, we have shared a link with all team leaders. That link will be shared on all the church groups. You can use, uh, it's a Google form. You can use that Google form to fill in the same information. Or if there's someone you know that hasn't come in that needs that form, you can share the link with them when you do. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. For that. The other announcement that we have is um, for all triple coders to please take a minute and stay behind after service to meet your leaders. All triple coders. After the service, uh, please take a minute to meet your leaders for a very, very brief meeting. And um, members of KBN, KBN is calling upon its members to be part of the build a house and sell project. Are there members of KBN today in church? Any KBN members? 
Yes. Um, so pass the KBN desk outside the tent for more details. And, um, and you, you'll receive more information. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, I see people are filling in the form. Thank you very much. One more minute. And um, the good newspaper is also available at the tent. Pick a copy on your way out. The good newspaper. Carry a copy for your children, for yourself to read in the course of the week. Hallelujah. And as we leave, please remember to do uh, the scripture reading for the topic that we are studying. Uh, because knowledge is power. Who went to a school which had such a motto? <laughs> knowledge is power, so let's seek knowledge. I'm going to ask us to rise up as we close our service. Thank you very much for coming to church. Thank you for coming for the first service. We have a second service coming through after. Thank you to our online church for joining us wherever you are. The Lord bless you. The Lord give you a good week. May he go before you and cause his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's share the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and have a lovely week. KBN, please stay behind and meet your leaders. Sorry, triple cord. Please stay behind and meet your leaders. At the corner, at the back. <laughs>